Today I'm going to talk about uh, different uh, leak sensor technology and the best way to use them in your home to prevent water damage in the case of a leak. Hello, I'm Blake, a professional innovator and designer in pursuit of the invisible smart home. Water leak alert. <laughs> Before I get into some of the different technologies of the uh, leak sensors, uh, I just want to talk a bit about some uh, best practices. Um, first, I think it's a good idea that if you are planning to put a leak sensors in your home, that you should have them connected to some kind of water shutoff so that when there is a leak, it automatically uh, shuts off the water. Um, inevitably, if you just have the leak sensors, you're going to miss the notification somehow and not or not be home and not be able to shut off the water. And you know, a few hours of running water can cause thousands of dollars in damage. Um, let's just, you know, demonstrate that here. So here's a puck style leak sensor you might have in the laundry room. Uh, imagine this water that I put here is moving and the leak sensor isn't moving. Get a notification on your phone, it shuts off the water. Some of the different technologies. So most of the um, leak sensors out there, at least the puck style leak sensors, are uh, battery powered. There's uh, different communication technologies and some are better for batteries uh, than others. Um, so there's Z-Wave and Zigbee type uh, leak sensors. And the batteries are typically good for one to two years, and that's not bad. And then um, this is a, a LoRa type leak sensor. The batteries in this are good for three to five years, and that's great. That's actually good. And these sensors have a much longer distance, although the Zigbee and Z-Wave can compensate that with their mesh networking technology and get longer distances. Um, this is a 433, and this is as well a 433 type leak sensor. The advantage of 433 is that the, um, the batteries last a long time because they're pretty much not even on until the water connects the two probes and uh, turns it on and that's when it, it's activated. The disadvantage of that is you don't get a status of the device itself on a regular basis. You, well, you never get a status unless I guess it, it, uh, there's a leak and, the, um, and you, don't, you can't really get a status of a battery life either. Uh, I like these uh, solutions even with those uh, two disadvantages. Uh, the leak sensors, they all work the same type of technology, at least these types of leak sensors. There's a couple probes on the bottom, two, sometimes three, and when water acts as a conductor between the two probes, it, uh, it sends a leak alert. Um, some of them have them on the top and the bottom. Um, some of them have temperature sensors in there as well, depending on the, uh, the technology. And also some have tamper sensors. And tamper sensors are a good idea, maybe not for a, your average home, but for in maybe industrial applications. Because inevitably somebody would move that, and if you don't know that they've moved it, then of course it's a null and void device, so you would want to know that it's been moved so you can you know, take action to have it replaced. And that uh, brings me to another point in terms of a best practice. It's a good idea to put a label on them that says leak sensor, do not move because, like I said, inevitably somebody will move it, uh, but this would discourage them from uh, moving it. Also, in terms of best practices, uh, we recommend when you first install your system that has leak sensors and a shut off or some type of uh, flow sensor, that you test the system using a, uh, you test the leak sensors with a wet paper towel in position, wherever they are, in the laundry room or the bathroom. That'll check for distance uh, issues and so on. Um, you test it when you first install it, and then you should test it uh, three to six months later. And then after that, you should test it once or twice a year. Lots of things can go wrong, and there's lots of variables. Your router could change position, or there could be new electrical interference in the home. So it's a good idea to check it on a regular basis. Uh, that'll give you a chance to check for battery life and so on. Um, let's move on to the uh, wired, what I call the wired leak sensors, because there's a wire. Um, so they're hardwired. In some cases, they could be plugged into the sensor and, you know, so you have a double sensor or they have their own uh, communications, wireless communications module. Um, in this case, I'm just going to show you it working with our Z-Wave version. 
of the uh, the Bulldog. So this one, it's uh, something we offer as an option. This has the uh, three sides, two, three. If any side gets wet, it shuts off the valve. There's also, um, this is a 433 type leak sensor that you mount on the wall somewhere or a panel and then you hang the probe. And when the probe gets wet, you get your signal and you would set it to shut off the water. And this is a rope type uh, sensor that you would, um, you know, spread around behind the uh, fridge or the dishwasher or the laundry room so that this whole length of this rope um, is sensitive to, uh, to water leaks. Let's just see if we can make this work with the uh, an adapter with the Bulldog. Let's try that right now. All right. There. When it gets wet, shuts off the water. Talk about the flow-based sensors. So uh, the wireless leak sensors, you know, 20 to 60 dollars. Z-Wave, Zigbee, 433, Flora. Um, they're uh, a good solution. The act, you know, the, I call them the puck style. You could take a puck and put it in leak sensitive locations like the dishwasher or the bathroom or the laundry room or the uh, the uh, where the valve is by the hot water tank, that kind of thing. Um, and that covers, you know, most of what you would have problems with. But of course they can miss leaks uh, for one reason or another because they're not in the right location. Or even when they are in the right location, the water could be, you know, two inches to one side or the other and it's going to miss that. So to kind of cover for that, there's flow-based solutions. Now, flow-based solutions are uh, typically much more expensive. Uh, 500 to a thousand and in this case uh, you need to hire a plumber as well so you know maybe you're talking uh, you know a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars to put a flow based solution in um, this is an intrusive what I call an intrusive solution because you have to add a plumber but this has a flow uh, sensor in it and as the water flows um, it's uh, measuring how much water is flowing and you could have a system uh, you know get a signature of your home what's normal flow and what's not so normal and then it can notify you and shut off the water at the same time as the, if there's a leak. Um, this is an intrusive version and I'll just show you right now another uh, intrusive version. And here's the uh, the Moen version of uh, an intrusive uh, flow based system. Um, so it's designed to measure water flow and they have something called the health test that can measure you know lower levels of flow because a flow meter can only typically do point to three gallons per minute in terms of sensitivity kind of in that level or maybe it's point to three liters I'm not sure but in any case it would miss leaks as well uh, micro leaks as I call them. We've tested the um, the Moen unit that has an integrated valve like this and it uses a propeller type flow device and that's cool and we're in the process of testing this uh, brand new uh, unit from um, NEO. And it looks like it uses an ultrasonic sensor, which is my segue into um, ultrasonic uh, flow sensors. So there's, a, there's three or four of them on the market. We tested the uh, blue butt, which I uh, will show you in a minute and we're testing the Streamlabs unit. And there's another unit called uh, Flume. This is the BlueBot unit. And like the Flume and the uh, Streamlabs unit, uh, it's non-intrusive. It just mounts or clips over an existing plumbing pipe. And that's uh, a cool way to do it. Like these um, standalone ultrasonic units without the integrated valve, because we can integrate them with our valve and it stays with the same concept of uh, no plumbing is required. All right, to review the three basic uh, leak sensing technologies that we discussed here today. There's the puck style sensors that use conductive uh, contacts. When there's water that shorts out these two contacts, you get a leak alert. There's uh, flow-based systems with, uh, well, this one happens to have an integrated valve that's intrusive using um, impeller and ultrasonic type sensors for flow. And then there's the non-intrusive that uses the ultrasonic 
uh, sensors for water flow. The puck style sensors are good. They catch uh, most leaks, but they can miss something. The flow based sensors are good, but they also miss uh, leaks. It'd be great if you could combine the both uh, in, in one solution to automatically shut off the water if there was a micro leak or a catastrophic leak or anything in between. So in conclusion, I think if you're, uh, you're new to the idea of uh, leak detection and prevention, um, first you should uh, select a system that automatically shuts off the water when there's a leak, as I said earlier. Um, I would start with the puck-based uh, systems that do that and then uh, once you're happy with that familiar perhaps you could uh, upgrade to this something like this that would give you both but really I think the best solution is combining the uh, the puck solution uh, with the automatic shutoff in combination with the non-intrusive uh, ultrasonic uh, flow sensors that's not really available yet we're working on it I'm sure others are but uh, that's to me the uh, ultimate solution. So uh, give me a thumbs up uh, and subscribe and look for my next video. Cheers.